And welcome back. Rochelle Riley left the Detroit Free Press some time ago, so it was a treat to see her words again in the paper uh, this past week. Frequent guest back in the days when she was at the Free Press on Flashpoint. It is great to have you back. Thank you so much, Devin. And the column that you wrote really registered with me and a lot of other people because you're, you wrote that right now Detroit is getting amazing press in so many different ways. It's on lists of the cities to visit this year. New York Times has written about USA Today on and on, but you note that the pessimism is coming from inside the house <laughs> rather than outside. You know, I, I, I love I love my city so much and what I can't figure out is why people feel like that they have to self beat like all the time. Mm -hmm. I don't care how great things are, we beat ourselves up worse than anyone ever could, worse than anyone ever has. The challenge is it's not true anymore. So we can't continue to do that. Well I did though as I was reading it, I, 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 as much as it registered with me, I also could hear the voices of some people in the neighborhoods where things are still tough going, you know what, I've still got way too much crime living around me. I've got dilapidated houses falling down on my block and you want to tell me about this nice skyscraper that's going up downtown. Oh no, not right? me. I'm not interested in the skyscraper. So here's the thing. <laughs> All of the work I'm doing as Director of Arts and Culture for the city is in the neighborhoods. The Belt Alley that's downtown, we're yep. doing that in the neighborhoods, eight of them. I think what people fail to realize is when you're turning a ship, it's not like a boat where, okay, you th think things are good, so let's just zoom right on. If you literally look around and see how different it is now than it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, when I got here 20 years ago, there wasn't even a drugstore in town. I mean, literally, we are seeing this resurgence of what's happening in the neighborhoods. And if you are looking at your neighborhood and it's not looking like you want to, get together and do something about it. Don't just complain about it. And there are so many ways to get some help. I, I just, I want people to love it. I want people to feel this sense of pride about it. There have been so many challenges to that, though. COVID, uh, now inflation that has moved mm -hmm. food prices, for example, sky high. We still struggle with transit. I mean, we still have a long list of things to solve and oh, fix. Oh, absolutely. But that's why, to your point, it is an aircraft carrier. It doesn't turn on a dime. Here's what, what concerns me most. Inflation is affecting every city, every state. All of the problems that we have are happening someplace else. I don't want us to ignore the problems. Oh my God, the press releases that come out of City Hall are everything, affordable housing, the Detroit Promise, so you can go to college for free, job training. There's lots of stuff that's happening. All I want you to do is try to balance it out a little bit and say, okay, well, this is not happening the way I want to, but look at this. And the other thing is this whole thing we have about Detroit, uh, the, the two Detroits, and there's Detroit downtown that's for some people, and then the neighbor. Downtown is my Detroit. I don't care what neighborhood I live in. I'm excited by what's happening down there. I want that to be a part of my life. But that doesn't mean I don't want something that's right on my block. So let's work together and try to get to a point where we are literally not always you know, like beating ourselves up. We, we do have a self-flagellation yes. problem. There's no doubt about that. But one of the things that I love about uh, your role now is to be surrounded talking about art all the time. Yes. I always, I've said on the program before, science makes life possible, art makes life worth living. That's and um, a big part of that is the murals that we've got now all over the city. And this is the video that you are, in fact, we're debuting it right now. Yes, you are. Uh, to kind of give you an idea of what is happening now in uh, what has become a a real calling card for the city of Detroit, uh, among uh, the greatest cities in the country for its mural art. Here's a look at that. In Detroit, we use our streets, we use our walls, we use our city for art. It gives insight into a city's culture and personality. It turns brick into canvas and mortar into museums. Only three cities in America do murals better than we do. Now we might be number four, but we're aiming for number one. In Detroit, soon you'll be able to use your smartphone in front of any mural and meet the artist who did it. Or you can see the murals without leaving home. Our mural map will show you where all the murals are and let you plan a tour of your favorites. Visit DetroitArtsAndCulture.com. See why Detroit is a leader in street art. And yes, we're that good.
now considered among the top four cities in the country for our mural art. And it's so funny. When you really get down to it, it, it is born out of a, a graffiti culture. Absolutely. Way back when, right? when the mayor started City Walls, it was to get rid of graffiti and bad stuff. And it's just like, it's a great metaphor for Detroit. We're going from where we were and turning it into something beautiful. It's going to take some time, but let's work together and do it. A nice boost to talk about it today. And I, really, it's so good to have you back again, Rochelle. Thank to you. Because I know you're thriving. You're loving what you're doing. I so absolutely love it. It's great to see it. you happy, too. Thank you. Yeah, you bet.